historically, this mill is basically the beginning of the industrial age in the Salem area. They started out with water power, then they went to electric power, and it was a very modern mill in those days. Thomas K. Woolen Mill is a museum now. It was a working woolen mill. It was originally started in 1889, operated up until 1962. Thomas K. was the founder of the mill, and there are three Thomas K's. But the first one, Thomas Lister K., was the founder. He grew up in England. He first came to Oregon in 1863. He was working in a woolen mill south of here in Brownsville. He wanted to start his own mill. So in about 1888, he started negotiating and he bought this site and produced his mill. The city of Salem promised him $25,000 in incentive money. And there had been linseed oil plant here before. So the water system was in, the turbine was in, everything. When he first proposed putting the mill in, his proposal said he would have 60 jobs here. He never went below that. Basically, in the early turn of the century, this mill represented about 20% of all the non-farming jobs in Salem. So it was a major employer. The wool around here, back in the 1890s, 1900s, we had probably four or five times as many sheep as we do now. And they would come from mostly local uh, ranches around here. Sometimes they imported wool from Australia or New Zealand, but most of it was local. This is wool that has not been carded, and this is the type of wool that's what we need to work with. And these are basically wire brushes. They keep doing this until they get all the fabric, fibers going the same way. Then you've got a handful of this, you go to a spinning machine, and the lady's got a handful of wool, she's drawing it out and spinning that into yarn. That works, but it's way too slow for the factory. So these machines over here, that's an automated process. It's doing exactly the same things as the carding paddles do. Okay, this is our spinning machine. You may have all seen a spinning wheel and this doesn't look anything like it, but it does exactly the same thing. The first spinning machine was invented in 1758. They called it a spinning jenny. The next version was called a spinning jack. This is the third version. It's a spinning mule. This is where we hired young kids, boys. They worked 10 hours a day, six days a week. They made five cents an hour. And what these boys did is they were watching these strings. And if one of these strings break, they would duck underneath there, grab both ends of it, tie it together, and get out of the way before the machine came back. There's no safety factors on this machine. There's an adult right in the middle running the machine. They've got a clutch lever. So if a boy's running slow, they'll pull the clutch lever and it won't run over him. This is our loom. This is the 1943 loom. It's taking all of these strings, like these strings back here, they're warp strings. And that's what they're called. They're the lengthwise strings. This string right here is what goes across. And it's what goes over and under to make your weaving. And it's done with this shuttle right here. That's the home position. The shuttle is hit by a stick and knocked all the way down there. One thing you've got to watch, see this error right here? That would all have to be fixed. And when they're mending it, they would do it by hand downstairs. After the fabric comes off the loom, it's going to be taken through this trap door up here and lowered down to this floor. Then it will go to that table over there, which is called a burling table. And that's where they're gonna check it. They've got magnifying glasses, chalk, and they're looking for any mistake in the fabric. Then it goes over there for mending. And it was always women in mending, probably because men are too impatient. The biggest user of wool from this factory 
with Levi Strauss Company. And Levi Strauss Company is famous for making blue jeans, which are cotton, not wool. But they also make outerwear. They called it wilderness wear. And that's where they used the wool. They, this is a price sheet from Levi Strauss from 1903. A boy's Mackinac coat was $5.50. A man's was $7.25. I don't think you can buy a Mackinac coat for anybody for less than 300 now. Thomas Kay was illiterate. He'd started working in a wool mill when he was nine. So he made sure his children got an education. His first child was a girl named Fanny, and she became basically his office manager. She did all the payroll, inventory, you know, all the secretarial stuff. She always figured she'd take over the mill when he died. He died in 1900, and in 1900, women did not run mills, period. So they went around her and gave control of the mill to her younger brother, Tom Benjamin Kay. And she didn't like that very much. Somewhere around 1906, her and her husband went east and they started Pendleton Woolen Mill. And Pendleton Woolen Mill is still run by her family, the Bishop family. So this mill was always run by the Kay family. Pendleton was always run by the Bishop family. Pendleton Woolen Mill is still in operation. As far as I know, it's the only large functioning woolen mill in Oregon. The decision to shut the mill down was made in 1957. But Tom K. III, the last manager, he had woolen buying contracts with all the firms around and said, OK, we'll buy all your wool for this amount of money. When he decided to shut it down, it shut down in stages because he didn't want to just shut down and leave you in the lurch, you being one of the ranchers. So it was shut down smaller and smaller, where you might have worked here until 1962, and I might have been laid off in 1960. To me, that shows a lot of integrity on Tom Kay's part. This mill represents that switch from the 1890s and real crude equipment. Our loom over there is 1943. Uh, but it just shows a progression of industrialization, mechanization.